Hello. I am Dr. Ghulam Nabi Mehman, Professor and Head Department of Anesthesia, Khairpur Medical College Hospital, Khairpur, Sin, Pakistan. Uh, today I will present the Ghulam technique which I devise for painless childbirth and a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and help the, help the mothers in pain. This study I did 10 years before. I will talk today on uh, the, the basic study and what changes we made in 10 years <coughs> and now what we are doing. So I will discuss both together. This technique is being used in many districts of Sindh, interior Sindh, in Khairpur, in Larkana, and in Nawab Shah. Regarding the study, the title of the study was to study to evaluate the feasibility and effectiveness of the walking spinal for painless childbirth with buprenorphine in 50 microgram and bupivac in 1 milligram. Introduction. Since very beginning, childbirth is portrayed as a painful, life-threatening and fearsome event. This is a nightmare for women and females. Uh, early attempts of reducing pain of childbirth had been crude and largely inf ineffective. Morphine was extracted by Adam Sartuner in 1817. 200 years before, but the obstetricians were reluctant to use morphine for childbirth because they believed that it decreases the uterine contraction and depresses the child. So both were not required. Regarding the physician of that time, they felt no compulsion to relieve the pain of childbirth because they believed that it to be a normal component of a physiological process. No need of giving any analgesic. In 1846, when Thomas Green Morton discovered the anesthetic properties of ether, many people argued that treating the pain of childbirth is a sin and against the will of God. Simpson administration of ether to an obstetric patient in January 19, 1847, after three months of ether introduction, began a new era of painless childbirth. Painless childbirth gained, gained considerable respect when Johnson administered chloroform to Queen Victoria for birth of her eighth child, Prince Leopold, in 1853, and later Princess Beatrice in 1857. This led to the use of nitrous oxide alone or with volatile agent through inhalers for a century. Methoxyfluorine, ethylene oxide, oxide were also used. Even cyclopropane was also used. Now, and regionals. Spinal anesthesia was introduced by Beer August in 1898. Uh, the introduction of regional analgesia in obstetric by Ambural E.B. 1930 and Killeen 1949 by continuous lumbar epidural through broad revolution. Then, in 1970, opiate receptors were identified at substantial agility nosa of the spinal cord. In 1979, two reports stimulated the research on spinal opiates. Wang et al. reported on the efficacy of intrathecal morphine to relieve unbearable malignant pain in eight patients, whereas Behar and his colleagues published the first report on the epidural use of morphine for the treatment of pain in Lancet in 1979. In past 30 years, now 40 years, Spanish administration of opiate has evolved from an experiment model to an important therapy for painless childbirth. Advancement in spinal needle design led to the evolution of CAC techniques and later mobile epidurals. Finally, the use of patient control epidural analgesia enabled the mothers a feeling of greater control over their birthing pain. The literature supports the use of intrathecal narcotics as a safe and effective method of painless childbirth. Use of spinal narcotics 
is associated with a shorter first stage of labor and more rapid cervical dilatation. Unrelenting hard, hard work and dedication from researchers, obstetricians, anesthesiologists, and pharmaceuticals in the last century has resulted in ma making the dream of pain free childbirth in a reality in this century. We selected uh, 50 full term parturients of ASA 1 and 2 with singleton preg pregnancy for painless childbirth, and we used bupuacan 1 milligram hyperbaric, which is, of course, does not remain hyperbaric by dilution in 1 ml and buprenorphine 50 microgram in 2 ml total volume 3 ml with 25 gauge spine needle through L34 number 3 number 4 interspace and lateral decubit disposition at cervical dilatation of from 3 cm to 7-8 cm. Nowadays we are using 75 microgram of buprenorphine with 1 milligram of PPOK, total volume 2 ml. This is the change we produce in 10 years. Fetal and maternal monitoring was carried out. So 10 years before, we used to monitor the fetus and mother during this study and before. But uh, after long experience of 10 years, we found no change in fetal and maternal hemodynamics. So the, the, now the physicians, our physicians who are practicing are too much confident and they don't put any monitor, which is not good. <laughs> they should put, I recommend to put monitor during spinal, <laughs> but even they don't put and uh, they, they have good results. Uh, no motor block was uh, assessed by Bromage scale. Sensory block was assessed with the Salim Pakistan coin pain scale. This is the scale we are using in Pakistan because of the language. The women don't understand the uh, verbal rating and view analog scale. So by observing the pain-free contraction. After com confirmation the efficacy of block, the patient were encouraged to come down and support from the labor room table and encouraged to walk after five minutes of establishing the block. Nowadays, after 10 years, we are uh, straight away asking the patient to to stand up and uh, she can walk after one minute. The patient was monitored in those days for changes in hemodynamic variables, nausea, vomiting, pruritus, ability to walk after five minutes without assistance, duration of analgesia, and acceptance of technique by mothers. Nowadays, many uh, our physicians are not monitoring the mother, and of course, there's no incidence of nausea, vomiting, and pruritus, and they can walk immediately after injection. Uh, inclusion criteria of our study was full term with singleton pregnancy, written informed consent and cooperation of the mother, physical status ASA 1 and 2, we did not take any patient with uncontrolled medical problem. They were young usually, most, most of them were young and did not have any medical problem. Most of the cases were ASA 1 and they have normal stretcher, no scoliosis, no kyphosis, and uncomplicated pregnancy. Our exclusion criteria were refusal of the patient, patient with comorbids, obesity, coagulopathies, abnormal anatomy of spine, infection at the site of lumbar puncture, bad obstetrical history, all the contraindications of the spinal were excluded. And the results were very good. We took 50 Parturans and uh, they reveal excellent analgesia within a few minutes of spinal injection and they were comfortable and pain free especially during uterine contraction for up to 8 hours plus minus 2 hours. Hemodynamic variables remain stable throughout labor except a slight drop in heart rate and blood pressure less than 10 percent. That required no treatment. That we presume is due to the, the stress is finished and they, have, they are not in pain now and during pain their blood pressure remained high and when we relieve the pain there was some fall in blood pressure not more up to 10 percent which required no treatment at that time even now we don't treat any 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 problem none of the parchment complained of nausea vomiting and pruritus 
Oh, in our area, the obstetricians are putting the catheter in every obstetric case to empty the bladder. So there was no urinary retention case. All were able to, all 50 were able to walk, but one request to sit down after one minute of walking and she, she say, I am tired, I cannot walk, so I want to sleep. She slept. FGAR scores were comparable to standard. There was no more fetal changes from the standard as compared to standard. In two cases, there was no effect of block at all. The block failed. As usual, our spinal fails. We did not repeat the spinal. In another two cases, there was complaint of pain, slight pain, uh, maybe in, uh, inadequate analgesia. And one primary gravity the duration of delivery exceeded 10 hours. And she did deliver successfully with slight pains in the last hour of delivery. In four cases, caesarean section were performed due to obstetric causes. Two were due to fetal distress, due to cord around the neck. Third was unknown fetal distress, and fourth was due to cord prolapse. Out of the 50 partials, two cases totally failed, means four person. Two were partially failed, means another four person. 46 cases, means 92 person were successful. So there were eight failure, we can say eight failure. This is a diagram showing the aesthetics. So number of uh, patients were 50. Age range was from 19 to 36. The mean age was 27. Mean duration of analgesia was eight hours. Discussion. For painless delivery, I calculated for the ideal uh, technique which should fulfill the following requirement. Number one, patient should be pain free during contraction. Mother should not feel any pain. Number two, uh, this technique should not influence or affect the progress and process of the labor and should not delay the labor. This technique, number three, this technique should not produce any degree of motor block, no motor block at all. So the patient, mother can push, she can walk and like normal person. She should not feel handicapped, I am paralyzed. This technique should not produce any degree of hypotension or hemodynamic changes like, like we have in a spinal. This technique should not require any volume preloading because uh, if we know when we give a spinal there's hypotension, we have to preload up to 1,000 ml of normal saline or LR. So we should, should not give this in this technique. And the sixth is this technique should not impair the power of pushing. Power of pushing should be retained. This helps in uh, expulsion of the baby in the last end of the uh, delivery and uh, on the contrary this technique help to push at the time when required and uh, normally the women push when they are in pain when the pain comes they start they do all salva and start pushing and untimely pushing can cause cervical tearing and disaster can occur but in this technique the technique should not impair the power of pushing Mm, the technique should not affect the ambulation. Patient should walk. Patient can walk uh, around without any motor power loss. The technique should not produce sedation, sleep, or amnesia, which is abnormal. And this technique should have no side effects of nausea, vomiting, pruritus, because all OPR have these three, and even urinary retention uh, in all OPR cases. This technique should be simple to practice. It should be done by three months, one six month postgraduate candidate. And we, in many areas of our Sindh or Pakistan, we don't have consultant and qualified people. Uh, even the trainee should can practice easily and does not require any any training and any hi-fi equipment. This uh, technique should be cost effective because we are third world country and uh, the money is always a problem. And when we use epidural, it costs three, four thousand, five thousand Pakistani rupees. Uh, it should be cost effective. So of course, spinal anesthesia is a very cheap, simple, effective method. 
uh, analgesia may be converted to anesthesia. This should be a property of a technique. If we need a cesarean section of a painless childbirth, it may be converted to anesthesia. Our spinal technique do not have this facility except this. Should have a minimal failure rate. Uh, it is simple, so the failure rate should be low. The patient, the, the technique should be safe for the mother and fetus. In general, the technique of painless childbirth should not affect any physiological variable of mother except blocking the pain perception. Traditionally, in intermittent or continuous epidural has been used for pain-free childbirth. The diluted concentration of local anesthetic often produces delay in onset of analgesia, and the concentrated solution produces motor loss and hypotension. You have to wait for 15, 20, or maybe 30 minutes because we are using very low dose. 0.1 person which take time to be effective patient is in pain and uh, the drug take time if you use high concentration it causes motor loss or even hypotension and preloading that preloading again causes the dilution of a circulating oxytocin drug and cause delayed in delivery of the baby to address this problem the CAC technique was used the CAC technique involves the injection of drug into CSF and placement of analgesia without motor block or significant hemodynamic changes. The epidural catheter allows the second part of the CAC is epidural catheter allows administration of medication to maintain analgesia and provide a means of delivering anesthesia for operative delivery. And the CAC means uh, uh, we give a spinal for immediate eff effect and then we activate the Epidural, it takes one hour to be effective, low dose, and uh, they, they reinforce each other. So this is mobile, patient can move, patient can walk maybe after half one hour, but I think patient cannot walk immediately after giving CAC. The drug most commonly used for intrathecal use include fentanyl, sufentanyl, and morphine. Uh, we are practicing epidural and combined spinal technique for painless childbirth at our institution since 1998. Initially our technique was CAC using buprenorphine, 50 microgram with 2.5 milligram bupivacaine, activating epidural with 0.1%, 10 ml bupivacaine. None of the OPR uh, recommended are available in Pakistan I even now after 10 years. No fentanyl, no sofentanyl, no morphine even available spinal. So we only drug this is available, which is, does not come under narcotic control is buprenorphine, which is easily available in local market. So that's why we were using buprenorphine. It's recommended. It's a preservative-free drug. Later on, our technique was to use intradural uh, buprenorphine and 2.5 milligram buprenorphine and activating epidural. Later on, we gave up activating epidural until patient request for it. That means we only put a spinal and put catheter without activating and then wait for the pain to occur. And but we found, we found that there is no need of activating the epidural because the spinal is enough to work for six, seven and then eight and we came to know now 10, 12 hours. Uh, then we started using, then we gave up putting the catheter on the spinal. We, now we know the, the spinal dose is enough, 2.5 milligram and uh, 25, uh, 50 microgram of buprenorphine are enough to produce pain-free patient for 8 to 10 hours. So we were confident to take out the catheter, don't put the catheter, only spinal. In this case, the patient were uh, unable to walk after a spinal injection, although they were able to move legs and there was uh, some degree of hypotension. We were also using the, the fluids to reload, as we say, because 2.5, because the minimum analgesic dose of VPWACAN is 1.9. So I was worried to use more dose, which is 2.5 milligram, although it is recommended in UK 2.5 milligram spinal dose of part of CAC and USA it is 3.75 which is even higher but I, I wanted to reduce the dose in which we can uh, only achieve the spinal analgesia, spinal sensory analgesia and I reduce the dose 
from 2.5 to 2 milligram and then again the patient was unable to walk immediately then I reduce the dose to 1.5 milligram and still the patient was uh, not able to stand up and walk and uh, then I use 1 milligram to manage motor block and emulation finally I get succeeded in getting goal of walking spinal for painless childbirth without preloading and it helped a lot so I used I thought it is only the buprenorphine which is effective maybe and I don't need to give buprenorphine so in some cases in pilot study in some cases I did not use buprenorphine 1 milligram the buprenorphine 50 microgram was not as effective for only for 2 hours 3 hours 2 hours maybe and then again I start same severe pain so I again added uh, this uh, buprenorphine 1 milligram in this study, we are testing the efficacy and feasibility of sole spinal technique for painless childbirth. We have successfully devised a technique which fulfills all the criteria of a safe and feasible technique for painless childbirth without any side effect, except it cannot be used for operative delivery. Now, what are the benefits of my technique? I gave the name technique as from my name, Golam Technique, for painless childbirth also. The benefits of this uh, technique are number one, pure sensory block, no motor block at all, quick ambulation is possible immediately after injection, no hypotension, no changes in hemodynamics, so no preloading is required, there is no sympathetic block and less monitoring is required nowadays many physicians do not even monitor the patient, they are highly confident, they did thousands of cases less expertise this can be done by six month uh, postgraduate candidate we don't have the consultant all over the country this this technique column technique has no side effect like nausea vomiting and pruritus and urinary retention this buprenorphine is very notorious and very famous for uh, producing nausea and vomiting i use myself as i in small doses even 100 or even 75 uh, it's a uh, patient vomits like hell and you cannot control vomiting so I was worried but there was no it's not a single case of vomiting in 50 mi 50 microgram then I uh, use for a year 60 60 microgram nowadays we are using 75 and even 90 micrograms in, in a spinal and the eighth benefit was profound maternal satisfaction. Mothers were highly satisfied after injection. They were smiling, they were moving, and there was early, early rapid uh, uh, progress of labor and early delivery. And there was early rapid cervical dilatation is the ninth. Tenth was it does not disturb the process and progress of labor. Uh, uh, on the contrary, it augments. It does not impair the power of pushing. Patient has a full motor power, she can walk and she can push at any time. It does not produce sedation, sleep or amnesia. This technique is very simple, can be practiced by anybody, a junior, junior most person can practice. It's very simple, it's very cheap and cost effective for the third world country, it's a very good. It has a minimum failure rate, you know, all know spinal has a less failure rate than other regionals. There were problem, problem related to technique. It was difficult to assess the total duration of analgesia in this technique because when, as soon as the baby is delivered, the patient disappears and we don't know how long was the duration of analgesia. And in another study we are, we are doing now duration of analgesia with norphine, different doses of norphine. One lady becoming, uh, after becoming pain free, after ambulation, wanted to sleep and got to sleep for two, three hours and she was arousable and delivered safely in due time, even rapidly, without problem. She told us she is uh, tired. So, conclusion. From this study, we conclude this, this single shot, walking spinal analgesia is an effective, feasible technique for painless childbirth. Further studies are required to place, confirm the place of this technique for childbirth. Now 10 years passed to this study and many, I did not find, one study is done on this 
and they asked me, we want to do. I said, okay, go ahead. And we, I guided them, they did it. But I don't find it in journals. So this was the all about Ghulam technique. It's on my name. Oh, thank you very much. And please share this video. This is not only for knowledge. This is, this is uh, helping the people, women of the world. More than a half population is women. 3.5 billion are women and every woman can go for delivery for one, two, three, four and five and sometimes six, seven times. So this is the solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped us. And there was no uh, struggle from my side to, to make this technique, but it's accidental finding. We were using CAC. The spinal part was so powerful, so we remove the catheter and we don't use the catheter, we, we go to the single shot. My part is reducing the dose of buprenorphine to 1 milligram, from 2.5 to 1 milligram, 2.5 is recommended in CAC. But I tried to reduce, because I was worried uh, because of motor block and preloading of the patient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the, the, the success. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please subscribe my video and share with your friends. Thank you very much. Where are you from? Where are you from? I mean, where are you from? I don't know. 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 I don't know.